Hi guys, welcome to Piece of Code and welcome to this video. So in this video, um, I'm going to discuss some of the tricks and tips on how to pass this AWS Solutions Architect SAAC03 that is the updated exam in just three weeks. Um, I'm going to share all my preparation techniques and everything. So recently, just yesterday only, um, I passed uh, the exam. So you can see the date is February 6, 2023 and I received the badge. So uh, yeah, I did this uh, certification into my collection. So for, within the past year, I've been doing a lot of certifications in AWS, GCP and Java and uh, I've made this channel so that I'll be able to share all of the techniques with you guys uh, so you don't face any kind of issues while you appear for the exam. Okay, so let's see what we're going to discuss in this particular video. So we are going to see the study plan, the three week study plan of uh, to how to, you know, structure your day and everything so that uh, you will be able to complete all the required topics and we are going to see some material and resources that I have followed and I um, will suggest some good resources for this particular exam. We are going to see the types of questions and the main sections from which the actual questions come. Then the, the bonus thing is I am also going to show you how to get exam topics full access without any kind of payment. So you will get all the exam dumps for free. And then we're going to discuss about some important AWS white papers. And then we're going to see how the exam works. Okay. Now study plan, I, I followed a basic study plan. So I took a course um, and I studied it for 13 days. So 13 days, I think it is quite enough for you to study. So even if the uh, course is for, let's say 30 hours, you can easily contribute one to two hours a day. And another technique to complete the course in an easier manner is to uh, watch the videos at 1.5x or 2x if you are comfortable. Then it will easily, uh, you, you will be easily completing the course in a matter of days. Then I went through the white papers of AWS, important only white papers. I skimmed through it in a single day. And then I practiced the questions for seven days because it is very, very important. So uh, as for the material and resources, okay, so I will suggest the best course for this particular lecture, sorry, for particular exam is for uh, the AWS Solutions Architect course by Stephen Marek. It's on Udemy, okay. I'll be linking all of the uh, links in the description for you guys to go directly, okay. Then there is also a course uh, by A Cloud Guru. It is also a very good course, but the thing is the A Cloud Guru pricing is very, very high. It's on the higher side. Uh, because if you see the pricing um, over here, um, you see it is $348 per year. So it is uh, on the heavy side. So I will suggest these uh, courses on A Cloud Guru if uh, you are work on a company and your company gives you free access to A Cloud Guru because when I appeared for the AWS Developer Associate exam, my company, I work in Accenture, so my company actually gave me free access to a cloud guru platform for a year so i was able to get that course and it was really good but if you are not able to get access to um, a cloud guru you can go for the udemy one and uh, generally they every month the udemy platform um, gives a lot of discounts and you can get the course for about 500 bucks or something then for practice tests you can go for um, viz labs practice tests Okay, Viz Labs is a platform, you can go for that or you can just go for the practice test by Stephen Marek on Udemy, the same uh, instructor. And then you can go for the exam topics, exam dumps, basically all of the previous questions that came into the exam will be on this particular site. Okay, and we are going to discuss later how to get this access for free. Okay, that's about it. Let's go to the next slide. So these are some of the main sections that I have researched and um, I've studied that the questions come from these sections. Okay, so S3 CloudFront and Global Accelerator, then EC2, okay, your virtual instances on the cloud, a database and analytics section also comes a lot, containers like ECS uh, and a little bit of questions on EKS, I have not included EKS into my sections. Then on SQS, SNS and Kinesis, then VPC, encryption and monitoring elastic load balancing elb and auto scaling groups so these are the most the most 80 to 90 percent of the questions come from these sections 
now types of questions guys now it is not only that you will just go through all the services like these i have listed down and you just know that okay theek hai s3 ka kaam hai object storage ac2 are virtual instances on cloud if you just go through the services and just remember what its service do then it is not enough for you okay so this is a architect kind of exam so the exam expects you ki you know how each service will work with other service okay uh, you don't only have to know a thing about a single service how it works on its own but you also have to know how that service interacts with another service and questions actually come like that only okay it it doesn't ask you straight forward questions ki okay uh, you want uh, to store some mysql data and you are transferring your mysql database to the cloud what kind of service you are going to use you are not going to get that kind of question directly instead you are going to get questions that is from a architectural perspective and it is different from a specific type of exam like developer associate or a devops professional exam that is also other aws exams in those kind of exams they focus on specific services like in the developer associate the focus on code pipeline cloud formation bean stock uh, eks and ecs and something like that okay so you know that okay ye 5 10 service ke andar hi hamara questions aane wala hai right so in the architect exam you need to know all the services at a high level and you know need to know how these services work with each other let's see some examples so in this particular example you see elb which is elastic load balancer asg which is auto scaling groups and route 53 this is a classic <coughs> classic high availability and scalable design where um, your back end instances are in a auto scaling group you don't worry about all these terms uh you, you will learn everything when you go through the course i'm just explaining the architecture so what happens in auto scaling group is that if one of the instances fails or uh, you know goes unhealthy then the auto scaling group will automatically create another instance and it will be available to receive your requests and the load balancer will be able to uniformly distribute all the requests uh, across your instances in your auto scaling group and route 53 is a dns service okay so if you query api dot what is the time dot com this dns will resolve this particular query to your elb and the elb will send the traffic to your instances which will receive a response back and you will get the response from the elb okay so this is the some very common architecture um, including elb as in route 53 so the questions may come like this let's see another example this example is regarding elb asg rds elb is elastic load balancing auto scaling groups rds uh, relational database service and elastic cache so in this particular example you can see what is happening same route 53 it will resolve your queries to an elb application load balancer okay now um, uh, your your back end instances fetch some data from your database but for some reason due to a lot of read queries right a lot of read queries are there so your database is actually uh, you know suffering some performance issues so you can introduce an elastic cache in between so that without directly querying the database right it will first query the cache if there is a cache hit it means that the data is present in the cache then that data will be returned back and the load on the particular database will decrease so this is one of the um, examples of caching so you can see a lot of services are working together same same situation but a different service instead of using elastic cache we are using a read replica so a read replica means that the, uh, the same database will be maintained as a read replica okay so all the read queries will be directed to a read replica instead of your main database and all the write queries will be going to the master database or the main database so the load on the main database will decrease and the read queries will be handled by a read replicas okay sounds good this is another example so cloud front and s3 uh, this is also another example where you know uh, s3 is a regional service so basically if you are in mumbai and your s3 bucket is in los angeles so basically you have to travel a lot of hops to reach your s3 bucket in los angeles and this will actually increase a lot of latency and everything so in cloud uh, cloud front what do, if you integrate with it s3 then it will cache the content at the edge location 
which is nearest to your region so if you are in for example india then the, the nearest edge location is in mumbai so the data will be cached in mumbai and the cached data will be returned to you thereby reducing the latency to fetch the data from the s3 bucket directly so this is another example of integration of two services cloudfront and s3 so this is another example of a basic data ingestion pipeline okay where we are using a couple of services like api gateway kinesis data streams kinesis data firehose and ultimately to s3 so there are a lot of time series data it goes through a api gateway basically it is kind of a uh, gateway on the cloud so um, api gateway then we have kinesis data streams which is used to ingest a lot of real time data then it pushes it to kinesis data firehose which kinds of act as a transformation service and it will transform the data uh, using some other service and then store the data ultimately in amazon s3 then you can also transfer the data to something other service for example amazon redshift sorry aws redshift where you can actually analysis the data or uh, run a lot of analytic queries on the data because it's a data fire uh, warehouse okay this is another example of a big data or a basic data ingestion pipeline and you can see a lot of services are used here decoupling using sqs okay so this kind of acts as a buffer between your um producer and your consumer for example the front end is producing a lot of requests that the back end cannot handle so you will send it to a sqs queue and the back end service will keep on polling for messages so it doesn't matter at which rate the front end actually you know uh, sends the request it will be stored in this particular queue and this back end instance or the back end processing instance will keep on getting one by one the messages from this sqs queue and it will keep on processing the work so no messages are lost in between because even though this back end processing machine is um processing the messages at a slower rate still the messages are still in the queue so that whenever this back end processing machine is free that machine can take up the requests and can process the messages so this is decoupling using sqs okay so these are some of the examples that i wanted to discuss where um, you know these kind of questions architectural questions actually come in the exam don't worry about the terminologies whatever i have used just understand that yes this kind of questions actually come in the exam important aws white papers now there are two white papers i absolutely suggest to go through there are a lot of white papers but out of those only two is important i'm going to link them in the description one is the aws well architected framework and another one is the disaster recovery that is very very important because two or three questions may come from this these two white papers okay so if you want to score two or three marks please go through these white papers okay now do the important part of this particular um, video like uh, so if you go to this particular uh, exam topics right it contains all the free dumps that you can use to practice for your exam it contains actually the previous questions which came into the exam and there are around 277 questions and uh, basically um, you will get some of the questions for free you can get about 135 questions for free but after 135 questions uh, you have to pay some money for example you can see i have opened a tab so i go to 135 questions and if i click on next question right now right now this particular pay block page appears where the last segment of each exam is restricted solely to users with contributor access and to get contributor access you have to pay some money okay now you can pay the amount but it is not worth it that much i will say because uh, because you shouldn't always depend on the dumps only you have to study a lot okay so what you can do uh, to actually get free access to all the questions is that just go back then just copy this particular uh, thing amazon aws certified solutions architect that much open a uh, for example a new tab and just go for example you want to go to question number 136 just type question 136 okay so when you do this if you click on here the discussion for that particular question opens up like 136 right and uh, basically 
you will get the question for free but the thing is the drawback to this thing is you have to search for each and every question for example i want to go to 225th or 230 questions right 225 for example question 225 if i click on it i i'm i'm getting the 225 question from that particular topic okay so for example i want 251 250 for example okay so you can see i'm easily getting the question but the drawback is that you have to search for that question every time but it's fine you are getting it for free so i don't think it matters a lot okay so this this is how you can get this thing for free and let's go back so let's discuss something about the exam so you have to register online at aws.training okay and the cost for the exam is 150 us dollars if your company provides it for free then it's fine you can schedule it for free you need some identity documents obviously no notes are allowed no pen also is allowed no speaking or anything you cannot use any kind of microphones or uh, um earphones or anything okay 65 questions will be a 130 minutes flag feature to flag the question so you need to score at least 720 out of 1000 and this is a bit weird because uh, we don't know how actually aws scores the exam it is kind of a scaled scoring so just uh, keep that in mind that um, score at least 75% of the questions okay so if from 65 questions try to score more than 50 okay so then you will easily pass the exam you will know within 5 days or less i got the result within 4 hours so i i don't think it will take a lot of time for you guys if you fail you can retake the exam 14 days later okay so yeah that's it from from this video guys i hope i cleared a lot of doubts for you guys um and uh, if you see in udemy now also a sale is going on for 529 bucks and this guy actually uh, creates uh, courses for a lot of uh, aws resources so basically you can get that uh, over here okay guys so that's it for the video i hope you like the video and uh, yeah let's meet in our next video till then bye bye have a nice day